Hey everybody and welcome back now for part seven of this series titled Design and Build a Chat Application with Socket.io. And in this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna switch up a little bit from what we've been doing. We're gonna dive into uh, creating a node server, uh, node with Express for basic routing, if you if you guys have seen that before, and then we're gonna bring in our socket IO package and just kind of lay the groundwork for uh, connecting to socket IO from the front end to the back end. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, and we'll go ahead and dive right in. There's gonna be probably some new things for you guys before if you've never done Node, which I hope will be interesting, I hope will be beneficial and something that you guys can use going forward as well. So let's uh, let's come over to our code and, and maybe before we do that, just kind of reiterate what we've got working here. Uh, we've got, if I refresh, we've got the ability to log in with a name, gives login message and then send a message and it pops up over here. And then we've got a couple of features for scrolling down as messages come in and stuff like that. I think it's good stuff. Hopefully you guys too, you guys do too. And then we'll, uh, we'll build on top of that here. So let's come over to our code again. If I can pull this up, uh, this is where we are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually open up the built-in terminal in VS code. And that command that I just used on a Mac is control tilde and actually probably control tilde on Windows as well. Uh, but this is the built-in terminal to VS Code on a Mac. I can do all the things that I'm used to. And the one thing I wanna do is uh, call an npm init. And basically what that's going to, uh, what that's gonna do is uh, initialize this, app, this folder, this repository as more or less a JavaScript application. And there's, there's things that come along with that that allow us to bring in other packages from npm into our application. And if you guys haven't been here before, uh, npmjs.org.com, one of these. Uh, this is the, it's basically just JavaScript packages. So this is, I think it's one of the, the biggest, do they say it on here? The world's largest software registry. And, and there's so many good things on here. It's the standard way for people to include JavaScript uh, libraries or uh, pieces of software into their code and to download, install them, manage dependencies, manage versioning of those dependencies, and all that stuff is through NPM. Um, so let's, uh, let's come back to our code. I'm gonna do an NPM init, and this is gonna ask me a series of questions, basically to get a feel for uh, what, um, what I'm working with and what the application is. So I'm gonna call it chat-app-demo. I'll do a version is 1.0.0, yes. Description, this is a chat application built with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and socket IO, all right? Entry point is going to be, uh, I'm gonna call it server.js, so this is going to be the file that actually runs our server, and it's only gonna be uh, 15, 20 lines or so, so it's not gonna be a whole lot. Uh, test command, I don't need that. Git repository, no. Keywords, uh, chat, socket IO, no. JavaScript, HTML, CSS, whatever you guys wanna add. Author is going to be uh, myself for now, and license, that's fine, and then say yes. And notice here that it generated this package JSON file. And this is uh, basically some metadata about our application. So you see all the information that I just entered is being reflected here. And I think one of the most important things is that it allows you to define dependencies. So your dependencies are gonna be packages from NPM that are brought into your application. And I'm gonna uh, start off here by doing an npm install and then a dash dash save. And I'll, I'll mention what that is in a second. And what we need is um, we need express and socket IO. So those are the only two packages that we're gonna need. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and start this install process. And what, uh, what save will do, and we'll see it in a second here, save will actually save a record of these two packages in the package.json file underneath, and you just probably just saw it pop up, underneath the dependency section. So this is saying in this, um, in this repository, we are dependent upon two packages, Express and Socket.io, and also notice that it created this node modules folder, which probably if you open it up, looks really intimidating, so don't be intimidated by it. But what this is, is these are all the JavaScript packages that have been brought in for us. And if we look, we can find, here's Express, and down here is Socket.io. Now all of these other things came in because Express and Socket.io have them as dependencies. 
So you kind of get this nested dependency tree that pulls in everything that you could need right into this node module folder. Now the node module folder is not something that you'll mess with, you'll leave that alone, it's just kind of there. And if you're checking this into uh, source control into Git or GitHub or things like that, you typically will not check the node modules folder in. The awesome thing with, uh, with the package.json file is if I delete this, if I delete my node modules folder, so that's all the packages that we just pulled in, and I now run npm install with no additional flags or commands or anything, it's going to grab uh, from the package.json, grab all the dependencies that are defined there and go ahead and install them. So if you're working with someone and they are looking to update their project, running that command with the package.json will go ahead and get all the packages that they need. So that's how that's, that workflow typically goes. All right, so now let's, uh, let's create a file called server.js. And I'm also going to create a folder called public. And I'm going to move all of the stuff that we've been working on into the public directory. Now, basically, what I want to do here is have the server file be the server that actually runs our application. And then the, the uh, public directory is going to be the, the, uh, the assets or the files for our actual website. So let's start here uh, on the server. I can get um, a, a reference to express using require express. All right, and notice I've got some, some populating notes over here. This is just a plugin that I've got for calculating the size, the size of packages as I bring them in. And in Node here, in Node land, which is more or less JavaScript on the server, uh, to bring in a dependency, you use the require function and then uh, tell them the, the dependency that you're looking for, all right? And then, uh, then we wanna do a couple of different things. Uh, so const app is going to be express, all right? and we'll get a reference uh, to the actual application there. And typically what we would do is we would do app.listen on, uh, let's say, port 3000, and then we can have a callback function in here and say, uh, just to show that it's working, listening on port 3000, all right? And if I save this and I come down and I do, actually, I'm gonna need to shut down the other one that I've got running, the finished product, so let's do that shut it down, and maybe I should have left it up just so we could see it, but that's fine. Uh, if I do node, and then I call our server JS file, it's going to start up, listen on port 3000. If I come to the browser, it's probably not gonna do anything because I don't have it serving any files yet, so I'll probably uh, just get a cannot get, um, cannot get kind of error message, and this is saying that we've got a little bit of work to do to get this set up. So node is gonna be the server aspect of what we're doing, then when we get into Express, this is, this is what helps us do uh, routing. So routing is gonna be when someone requests a certain URL, what do we return to them? So the first thing we wanna do is uh, we want to serve the public directory. So this means if anyone is calling to our server and it's not handled by one of the routes that we're looking for, uh, we want to uh, serve what's in these public directories. So if you can imagine, when someone navigates to the URL, they will get the index.html, which has a reference to app, CSS, and JavaScript. Those are public assets that when uh, the browser makes the request by serving this public directory, Express or Node or R, it's really Express, is, is saying, yes, browser, you can come and get these assets because they're completely public. So to do this, it's app use express.static, and we need to pull in something called path. And this is probably pretty confusing and we won't get too deep into what uh, the specifics of this, uh, this line of code is. And actually, just because of that, let me, uh, let me just copy what I have and paste it in here. All right, basically what this is saying, app.use is saying there's some middle, middleware that we want our application to use. So it's basically just adding functionality into our application, into our routing. Then we wanna say, we're looking for a static directory and we're looking for it at the path of um, where our project is and then public. So again, don't focus too much on the specifics of this. Basically what we're doing is we want to be able to give access to these files from the browser by making them public. That's really it. Now the second thing we're gonna do is define a git route. So app.git uh, to the root and then uh, you can have a 
an arrow function here that takes in a request and response. So request is the incoming request. Response is actually the outgoing response, as you can probably imagine. And what we want to do here is anytime someone requests, uh, requests this URL, so it's basically just localhost uh, 3000 like we've got here. Anytime someone requests that, we want to return back. So res.send file. We want to send a file. And it's going to look a lot... Uh, a lot like what we had with uh, with this path join stuff up here and it's just kind of built in stuff in a node to help make it easier to um, to not have to hard code paths into your application so we're gonna we're gonna do a, a join on the deer name which is the directory that we're in and it's the same thing that we did up here so the directory that we're in and then we want to add on after that uh, public and then index HTML so again, don't worry too much about the specifics here. Just know that we are setting up a Git route. So when someone makes a request to this URL, which is just the base URL, localhost 3000, we want to send them back the index HTML file. And if we save this and now reload, let's see, reload our browser here, we should, oh, one thing we didn't do, sorry, and this is actually good to note, is when we run our server with Node Server JS, it doesn't auto refresh so if I were to now uh, run this again it should pick up all the changes and we should see now hopefully our application okay so that worked and this is when you're doing a lot of node development this gets really um, this gets really tedious to go back and, and restart your server every time you make a change so there's something called nodemon that will auto update your server anytime you make a change so if I call nodemon with server and then I come in and do a save notice it's gonna restart here and if I, I don't know, I could do anything. I could change this to say, we, oh, if I typed it in in the right place, we, when I say this, notice it's going to update here to, to include that we. All right, so Nodemon is just going to auto update your server as you save server file, uh, as you save your server files. All right, so that's super useful, especially if you're doing this back and forth a lot. And to get, uh, to get Nodemon, it's an npm install dash g, Nodemon, and the dash G says this is a global dependency, which won't be defined to a specific project. It'll be on your computer globally, so you can use it anywhere. So that's the command, and after you install that, then you can run Nodemon server JS. Very cool. All right, so this is the basics of what we want. Now there's a few uh, little specific, um, few specific things that we want to do on top of that with Socket.io. And uh, the first one is going to be we're going to get access to HTTP by requiring the HTTP module, and then we'll call it server function and pass in the app that we got right here. And the last piece up here is we'll get access to basically the, the Socket.io connection or the Socket.io object by requiring Socket.io. But we require Socket.io and then we call it by passing in this HTTP that we just created. So what, what this really means is we're going to now use HTTP for our server. So we're going to replace HTTP or app with HTTP here to use, uh, use that. And now we've got access to our um, Socket.io object and we can call io.on and then say connection and pass in a callback function and say console log a user connected. All right, so what this means is we're saying this is basically an event handler on the connection event for Socket.io. It says when someone connects, it's gonna give you a reference to that socket and we're not gonna do anything with that socket yet. We're just going to basically log it out and say that someone connected. So let's save this here, and if I come back here and I refresh, I think I've got something a little deceiving going on here. So I think this is the, let's see, let me close this out and I'm going to restart our server. Let's start it one more time. And now we don't see anyone registering. And now if I refresh our page and come, let's refresh and come back to the logs, we don't see anyone registering yet either. Okay, so this is actually what we want. The reason that I was seeing 
this uh, user connected message pop up is that I had an old browser tab open with the finalized application and it was confusing me a little bit uh, that it was actually printing out a user connected because it shouldn't be quite yet because on the front end in our uh, app.js we now have to tell it to do something um, to actually connect. So the two things we need to do, we need to grab our HTML page and we need to add a script tag. I'm gonna grab this and put it down here at the bottom. And this is actually important placing. Uh, so what this is, is it's going out to Cloudflare to get the socket IO, socket IO library for the front end. And it's important that this goes before the app.js because this has to be loaded before we reference it in app.js. So uh, let's see, if you guys are uh, trying to figure out uh, how to not type in this URL uh, completely, you can go to socket IO and just type CDN. And you can find, uh, where's Cloudflare? I can find, I guess I can just type this Cloudflare. And if you look in here, uh, the socket IO JS, this is what I'm using. So you guys can go and just copy that, copy this URL from the uh, CDN JS. And CDNs are basically just someone else is hosting these repositories and through the script tag, we're able to bring it in and call them to give it to us instead of calling our own server. All right, so that is, that should be okay. And then in our app.js, the last thing we need to do is actually just make a call to uh, get the connection. And it's actually super simple. So after all of these things, all we need to do is say var socket equals IO. And IO is what we brought in from, from that script tag. So let's save this. Let's come back to our browser. Let's refresh. And let's pull open the console just in case something went wrong. We can see console looks okay. And come back here and says user connected. So let's, let's take a look one more time to break this down. On our server, we've got express on top of node for our routing, which allows us to uh, add this get route and the public directory. Public directory just says anytime someone wants the things inside of here, just give it to them. Don't worry about it. The get route is to the root of the application. Anytime someone comes there, just return the index HTML. Then we defined uh, the connection event. So anytime uh, someone connects to our application, we're going to log out uh, user connected just so we can see it. And then on the front end, we included the script here, the CDN for socket IO and uh, just made a call to uh, the IO function and that goes ahead and uh, gets the connection. So that's all we need to do to get the connection. Uh, and that's gonna wrap up this video. In the last one, we're going to take that socket IO connection and be able to send messages across different clients to be able to wrap up our application, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, so I will see you guys in the next video where we will wrap this thing up.